close your eyes. And if you're going to think, think about the breath. And the other thoughts you can let go. When you say that the mind is quiet, it doesn't necessarily mean that thoughts don't appear. It's simply that you don't go running after them, because you've got a better place to stay. You stay grounded in the breath. Not where your brainstorms have, have some safety. They have, they have a grounding wire. Otherwise, our ideas can get further and further away from reality and get more and more abstract. And sometimes they seem very noble and very, very creative. But if they're not in touch with reality, then they're not really worth anything. And they actually get in the way. Years back, I was talking with someone who'd been on a retreat, and apparently the re theme of the retreat was the interplay of the absolute and the relative in daily life. And the more she talked about it, the more confused the whole idea sound, sounded. It's not so much absolute and relative that's the problem. It's the question of what are you acting on? What thoughts do you go with? What thoughts do you let go? In other words, you have to make a distinction between what's skillful and what's not skillful. You need a good place to stand in order to see that. This is what the breath provides. It's right there. It's right next to the mind. It's not a thought. You can think about the breath, but the breath itself is outside of your thoughts. So you can step out of those worlds and look at them. See, where are these worlds going? If I acted on these worlds, what would they, where would they take me? In the beginning, you make up your mind that no matter what the thought is, you're just going to stay with the breath. No matter how interesting or fascinating it may be, you just stay right here. And then as you get more and more used to being grounded right here, okay, then you can watch your thoughts and decide when something is worth going with and when something is not, because you have this good grounding. So this is an essential skill for learning how to think properly. So you can check your, your thoughts, keep them grounded, and make sure they go in the direction you want. Because the Buddha talks about thoughts not so much as to whether they're interesting thoughts or fascinating thoughts or creative thoughts. The question is, where do they lead you? What kind of things do they make you do? And you want to be in a position where you can see that clearly. You see where they come from, you see where they're going. It's like a bus coming up. You know which, which route the bus is following. And so you take only the buses that go to where you want to go. As for other buses, you can let them go. They can go anywhere they want to in the city, anywhere they want to in the country, but you don't have to go with them because you see they're not going to the place where you want to go. So keep yourself well grounded right here. And give yourself a sense of ease and well-being to stay here as well. Otherwise, you're going to jump on any bus that comes by. It'll end up taking you who knows where. But if you have a sense of ease right here, then the buses can come by and you can be picky about which ones you want to follow, which ones you want to get on. And that way your thought processes become skillful. You're more in control. You don't let them pull you off in whatever direction. You have a clear idea of where your thoughts are coming from, where they're going, where you want to go. That's when you can say that you're really in charge. <laughs>